The question I've been concerned with in recent videos is how happy is it possible to be? How happy is it possible to be? We can find lots of reasons not to be happy. We, we might take a look at the news on the television and say, well, there's nothing to be happy about there, is there? Or perhaps somebody we know, somebody that we're close to is having a particularly bad time. Or perhaps we ourselves are having a particularly hard time financially, emotionally, physically. So not much to be happy about there, is there? But if we could forget all these reasons and realize that our happiness does not depend on what is going on elsewhere. And this is very much the message of these teachings, is that the world is like a dream. If I had a bad dream last night, should I make a point of being miserable all day? When we realize that the world has got no intrinsic substance, when it's of the same nature as a vision or as a dream, then why let it bother us? Why let it determine whether we're happy or not? The thing is, we're quite attached to our misery. It's become quite a habit. And it's quite important for us to find reasons to fuel this habit. And to be happy when there's so much misery is surely a sign of callousness or disregard. But then again, who does it benefit by being miserable? Do we really think it contributes to the world by being miserable? by being sombre, by looking glum. Perhaps in certain circumstances it's important on, a, on an interpersonal level when you're commiserating with somebody. If somebody's had some bad news, you don't respond with a bright cheery smile, you commiserate with them. But that's quite different to the rest of the world. We're not experiencing the rest of the world. If we're experiencing a friend or relative's sadness, then of course we show sympathy for that. But we've got all these stories about suffering that we can't actually do anything about. So why let it determine how we feel? we've actually got the potential to be as happy as we want to be, as happy as it's possible to be. So don't we have a duty to bring this happiness into the world? Don't we have a responsibility to bring this happiness into the world and to see that it's possible to be happy in spite of what is going on? So this is a particular challenge as an enlightenment practitioner and it's a challenge which the Mahayana Sutras rise to superbly with their glorious depictions of what can only be described as happiness, as happiness, as infinite light. I'm really talking about happiness with a capital H, I'm not talking about simply a happy mood. We're talking about the capacity for infinite joy, not just getting into a good mood. So this is something we can examine. And I was talking about this in the previous video. 
and how we don't need to take our cue from the world. But there are times when it is very difficult, especially if you're actually in physical pain. I've spoken about this sort of thing before, but it's probably worth looking into it again. The Buddha taught the end of suffering. He didn't actually talk about the end of pain. As far as I know, there isn't any end to pain. Pain is something that we have to deal with. What we can manage though, what we can alter, is our response to pain. Sometimes it's possible to practice when you're in pain, sometimes it's not. Sometimes the world sucks the attention into it and we get caught up in it, we get caught up in the drama, we get caught up, we get caught up in the anguish and the despair. As enlightenment practitioners we watch for these moments when the attention comes out and allow it to rest back in itself. And hopefully with practice the attention gets sucked into these vortices, these tempests of confusion and suffering less and less. So this one about pain was an interesting one and I mentioned in the previous video I'd let you know how I got on when I experienced pain and the opportunity arose quite quickly. I had a couple of appointments yesterday, both at very short notice so I had to rush to both of them and as I've mentioned before I've got mobility issues my feet, they feel like I'm walking barefoot on pebbles, so it's very uncomfortable. I'd even taken what medication I had, but it didn't seem to have any effect. And my, my left knee is swollen and stiff and painful. So I had to get to these meetings. And I was remembering the practice, I was remembering what I said. Every step was uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm trying to deal with this and I'm looking at the pain, I'm examining the pain. Like I said, we can change our relationship to pain. Pain can trigger some very childish states in us. And there were times that I actually seemed to be walking quite well. And I decided to just ignore the pain. Although I must confess I felt like I was going to pass out at points. So, yeah, the, the results were mixed. I'm not going to say I transcended the pain or anything like that. I was working with my relationship with the pain. And this is what you have to do as part of pain management. I'm sure there are many resources you can turn to if you are suffering from physical pain, but these teachings are not really about that. They have to do with the suffering caused by our own moods, our own habits. But as part of our practice, we can look at our response to pain. We're not trying to become superhuman about it or anything like that. It's just another avenue of the experiencing that can be explored. And it's a part of the world which hijacks the attention in a very strong way. And there's not much we can do about that. The attention will be hijacked. And I think I mentioned the Buddha experienced pain. There are a couple of accounts where it's quite clear that the Buddha 
wasn't a great deal of pain. And he suffered from back pain as well. His attendant, Alanda, would give him massage to ease the pain. So the Buddha didn't teach about physical pain, he taught about suffering. And that suffering is about finding excuses not to be happy. So we can drop all these excuses. There may be times that it's not possible to practice. This is life. On the other hand, there are many opportunities to practice. So, we should be sure to take them. 